Christian Williams and it's a very sad day in the bodybuilding industry today with the announcement and the news of George Peterson passing away just one day out from 37 years old in the prime of his career I don't know George personally but I do know bodybuilding and I do know that in the last 18 months there's been a lot of deaths now I'm not one to speculate why people are dying. You know, in, you know, very close to my heart, bodybuilding, I'm very passionate about it. And I've been passionate about it since the age of 15 years old. But what I do know is from my own experience that I can share them insights with you today and hopefully guide anybody from going on the path of destruction and try to shed more light on a very taboo topic. So I'm Christian Williams and I've been competing since I was two, since 2008. So I was a junior and I started climbing up the ranks and then I went on to the intermediates and to the misters. I won Mr. Wales, Mr. London, Mr. England. I represented the UK in the World Championships. Bodybuilding was very something I was very passionate about, very obsessed about. I was a chubby teenager and I transformed the way I looked. And then I got very obsessed with creating that perfect physique which I did, I achieved a look that I wanted to achieve that I saw in my mind's eye. Now, building muscle was never really a, much of a problem for my body. I was born with genetic great strength as well as mind strength, physical and mental. So I was able to lift a lot of weights, which resulted in a lot of muscle mass. Obviously I've been retired from bodybuilding since 2019. I was a lot bigger for my height. I was carrying a lot of tissue. For me, it was always a condition, trying to get that supreme condition. My body type was never genetically gifted with supreme condition, so I had to push the boundaries. I had to diet extremely hard, sometimes doing two hours of cardio, three hours of cardio, doing zero, zero carb diet, zero fat diet, whatever it took. Now, what I want to kind of make a highlight of today is nobody's ever to blame you know, I've worked with many coaches and I've done things that coaches ask me to do, but the art of a champion will do anything. So I want to share an experience with you of what happened to me probably 2015. I just competed in one of the local competitions and I qualified for the British Championships. And I worked with my coach at the time, who was a dear friend of mine, and we, we decided to do some diuretics. And if those of you don't know what diuretics are, diuretics are a, a drug that helps the body flush from water. It's actually used for certain high blood pressures and heart problems to get rid of a lot of hematomas, a lot of water very fast. So this is the first time ever in my life that I thought I was going to die. Literally, you know, I've done some crazy things out there, but this experience I had was the first time I literally thought I was gonna die. So I competed in the Mr. Britain competition, and for you, those of you who are not familiar with bodybuilding, usually what happens, you have a pre-judging and then you get a final. So I did the pre-judging competition. You know, a few days before the event, I was taking these diuretics as well as cutting my water as well as reducing my carbohydrates. So I was extremely dehydrated. My potassium and sodium levels would have been all out of whack, okay? Which I know is not the right thing to do, but it was what I was willing to do to get that supreme condition. So I'm on stage and I hit a habs and thigh shot, which is overhead, flexing down, and my abdominals cramp, okay? My abs lock out and they cramp. So I can just about get off stage. So I come off stage and I say to my coach, I'm in a bad way, I'm starting to cramp up. He tells me what to do, go back to the room, relax, have some food, get some sodium in you, replenish yourself, get some water. So on the way back to our hotel room, which was probably around 500 meters away, my entire body was cramping. My legs were going, my back was going. We went for food with my wife, myself and my wife, opposite the Premier Inn that we were staying in. And I ordered a burger and fries, very high in salt and so forth, which I needed, and some water. People come to congratulate how I looked. And I literally couldn't talk to them because my, my, my neck and my jaw was starting to cramp up. I was trying to eat my burger and my hands were like locking like this, okay? Like really like. So I got the food inside me. 
and I went back to the hotel room with my wife and I was laying there and my entire body was spasming. Um, if anybody ever experienced cramp, it was like cramp but pulsing all over me like <laughs> like this. And I was going in my back and I was like, ah, <laughs> like this. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, like, you know, I, I think I'm gonna die. I really think I'm gonna die. Um, I remember laying there and I was saying to my wife, <laughs> you know, can you, can, you, can you do me a favor? And I was going like this and everything was locking up. I never had a severe cramp where I went into a cramp, but I had like shivers of spasms of cramp all over my body and look, I'm, I'm not a stupid guy, although I've done some stupid things. I'm smart enough to know that when your potassium levels are out of whack, all it takes is that contraction to go into the heart and it's game over. You know, there's been a lot of people in this sport who have died from doing directics. I was aware of that before I took them, but I took them because I had a mindset of I just wanted to do my best. And I wanted to look supremely conditioned. So I was, doing this cramping and I was laying down and I couldn't get comfortable, I couldn't relax because I was just under complete shock. I said to my wife, I messaged a guy I knew before I said to my wife and I, I saw if he had any of these Quinny tablets that I know from past experience and some of the other coaches I work with always suggested to use a Quinny, which is a, a pharmaceutical kind of um, prescribed drug which helps with cramping. So I messaged him, do you have any quinny? I'm up in the room, I'm in a bad way. Obviously I messaged my coach as well. Then I asked my wife to go and get these tablets off a friend of mine. So she goes and I'm laying in bed and I'm praying to God. And I'm praying, I'm thinking, please God, don't allow my wife to come back and find me dead. And I was literally, it was the only time ever in my life where I thought I was gonna die. You know, I've jumped out of a plane several times, you know, I've done some, some extreme things, but literally, I was just praying, thinking, don't let my wife come back and find me in the hotel room dead, because that would be just so devastating for her to have to live with her, and my coach and everybody around. So I continued to go through this camp cramping kind of emotion eruption and she came back and I took the tablets and I everything started to settle and I drank some water and I had some food and I went back to the competition that night and um, I competed and I looked far better and I placed fourth which was in a, a lineup of around I believe 17 guys I beat guys that had beat me in the past um, but again it was the lesson I learned from. I was pushing the boundaries and my life could have ended in that hotel room. And not only would my life ended, but probably the people close to me would have ended as well. So what I want to kind of shine light on guys, nobody's to blame for anything. I work with coaches now in bodybuilding, in everything I do, public speaking. I had a coach who was helping me out with doing a stand-up I was working on. I got coaches in business. So you learn from these people, but ultimately, you know, I wanted to push the boundaries and many people want to push the boundaries, especially in this sport and any other sport. Now I sat down with Lisa Gelsey, who's a very dear friend of mine and she's very respected in the bodybuilding community. She's, com she's judged bodybuilding shows as high as the Arnold Classic all over the world and she shined light on the fact of there are women and men, women in particular we spoke about because there were a lot of deaths within the women as well that are, they are seeking that just superior condition, okay? That the body has to go through so much extreme protocols to reach. And she said the only way, the only way that we can stop this level of condition, okay, this gnarliness, this aggressiveness, is to not promote and to not honor that as the winning physique, okay? Now, Bodybuilding, unless you do a natural bodybuilding competition, which I've done in the past, it's not drug tested. There's no regulation there. And what Lisa was saying, that the judges need to put a criteria on or not give in the place into these conditioned, extremely conditioned athletes. Because the protocols they have to take, and they do, 
are so borderline. Life or death decisions they're making. Literally, we're talking about things that can literally kill you within an instant. And it's no joke, especially when you've got no body fat on you, you've got no water in you, you've got no glycogen storage or whatever it may be. You're stressed, you're dehydrated, and you're alone in an hotel room like George Peterson was this past couple of hours. He was found dead in his hotel room on his own. His coach was messaging him. His coach couldn't get hold of him. His coach had the security to knock on the door and they found him dead, laying down. Okay, now maybe he had an heart attack, maybe he had some ass, I don't know. But I do remember not so long ago when I was laying in the hotel room, wishing and praying that I wasn't gonna die. And I know there's many people out there in this sport, many people pushing for competition who are probably experiencing the same thing. Okay, there's too many people dying within our sport. There's too many people dying. Okay, so we need to start regulating somehow how we're going to stop people using these extreme protocols. Judges need to step up. Competitors, you know, I walked away from the bodybuilding not because I had any illnesses or conditions because I kind of had enough, not in a way where I wipe my hands, but I achieved what I wanted to do. 10 plus years committed to one sport was great. But what I'm gonna to say to you is, look, ask yourself, because now I've come away from it, I've asked myself these very questions. Is what you're doing really worth it? I mean, do you really wanna risk sacrificing your life for what? Uh, for pictures to look back on, for a bit of recognition? I mean, there's more to life and there's more to you than just being on stage, you know? So look at the bigger picture. I honestly think that they should bring some regulation and drug testing into these sports, like every other sport, okay? Every other sport uses drugs, but let's be realistic and honest. Bodybuilding is heavily reliant on the drugs because in order to build that freakiness, okay, that we see and that we aspire to be, it's not normal. Okay, and a lot of people are really pushing the boundaries and they're really pushing themselves to the point where their life is either coming shorter than planned or it's ending faster than expected. So that's the mess I want to give out today. So, you know, I'm interested to hear your story. If you've had any similar situations, comment below. You know, help more people. That's the reason why I'm doing this. So I just want to stress I'm not jumping onto this clickbait, I don't give a shit about that. I'm not trying to grow my channel. I'm just trying to deliver a message. When I heard this, this information today, it really touched me hard. And I reminded myself of when I was in that same situation. But I'm here today. And I have a responsibility being here today to tell you to think more about your actions. And also, not just your actions, but your actions, how they're affecting other people's life or lack of. I'm Christian Williams PT, thanks for listening. If you haven't done yet, subscribe to this channel and I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say. Thank you.